get a headache after traveling by bus or train do you get a headache when you are in a crowd sometimes the reason for this headache is either air pollution where you are inhaling carbon monoxide or it is the noise pollution where you are exposed to a higher level of uh, noise which is not healthy for your system today we are going to deal with noise pollution welcome to this session what is noise pollution noise pollution is generally defined as notice regular regular exposure to elevated sound levels that may lead to adverse effects in human beings and other living organisms so it is a regular exposure to elevated sound levels according to the world health organization sound levels less than 70 decibels are not damaging to the living organisms regardless of how long or how consistent this exposure is noise pollution affects both health and behavior of individuals when there is unwanted sound noise it can damage the psychological health of persons and it can cause trouble and it can have hypertension it can lead to high stress levels and even tinnitus tinnitus is the perception of noise or ringing in the ears ringing in the ears it's a common problem that affects about 15 to 20 percent of people tinnitus is a condition by itself it's a symptom of an underlying problem like it may be due to the age related hearing loss it may be due to hissing humming hearing loss sleep disturbances or even other harmful effects so sound becomes unwanted when it either interferes interferes with the normal activities such as sleeping conversation or disrupts and diminishes one's quality of life when you are sleeping if there is a high sound level you will get annoyed when you are talking to someone if there is too much of a noise around then you will tell others can, can you please talk a little softly so this is how the noise pollution affects us and it can have both physical as well as psychological effects let us look into the sources of noise pollution all of us are aware of what are the sources of noise pollution so you must be knowing it must be the unnecessary usage of horns in the buses using loud speakers either for religious functions or for political purposes it can be due to unnecessary usage of fireworks industrial noise construction noise noise from transport such as railway and aircraft buses these are the major sources of noise pollution noises are more likely to damage your hearing system if they are 80 decibels and last for a few hours or if they are 100 decibels and last at least 14 minutes if they are 110 decibels and last at least 2 minutes now to understand what are these decibels let us look at what is the decibel level of our normal activities daily activities when you breathe the noise level is about 10 decibels when you are whispering to someone it is about 15 decibels typewriting is about 50 decibels loud conversation is 70 decibels so according to who any noise level which is above 70 is harmful for health 
barking of a dog is also 70 so this much we are comfortable level we have comfortable levels of noise coming to cars and bikes it's about 90 decibels so we are going higher trains 110 decibels factory boiler 110 decibels plane jet airways it will be about 120 decibels thunder is also 120 decibels volcano eruption is 190 decibels so you can see how these noise levels can harm our system sound waves become shock waves when they are more than 194 decibels so this is where sometimes this sound shock therapy is used even in detecting crimes when it goes beyond a bearing capacity a person may become unable to control his own emotions and the person's mental health may be affected so this is where we need to be aware of how the sound waves can create a disturbed mental health in human beings what are the intervening factors for the adverse effects of noise levels number one it is sound level what level of sound or decibel it is secondly it is the distance if this noise which is of about 120 decibels is happening somewhere about 100 kilometers away it is not going to affect us but if it is happening very close by we cannot stand there so this is how the intervening factors are number one the sound level secondly the distance and also the time that is the duration to which you are exposed to the noise pollution if these all these three are at high levels it can lead to hearing loss many of the bus drivers in the cities suffer from hearing impairment because of this regular exposure to high noise levels what are the effects of noise pollution these effects can be categorized under two that is auditory effects and non auditory effects auditory effects will lead to hearing impairment as well as to auditory fatigue there is a fatigue in the ears so this this, uh, this is caused by noise pollution secondly non auditory effects are annoyance you get annoyed with the noise you may have loss of working efficiency there may be interference to speech and communication there may be physical disorder there may be physical disorder like increase in heartbeat pressure etc so these are the effects of noise pollution the auditory effects there are about 25000 hair cells in our ear so which create a wave in our ear and responding to different levels of frequencies with increasing levels of sound the cells get destroyed they get destroyed decreasing our ability to hear the high frequency sound chronic exposure to noise can cause noise induced hearing loss older persons may be exposed to high significant occupational noise and they may demonstrate reduced hearing sensitivity as well as ability what are the measures to prevent noise pollution some of the noise pollution preventive measures are number 1 create or some of the noise pollution preventive measures are creation of silent zones and permissible noise level in the active zones it is important near the schools near the educational institutions and all we can need to have a silent zone 
I request all of you to just keep silence for a moment. You can experience how much noise we are exposed to even while listening to a talk like this. So, when we are silent, we experience a kind of homeostasis within us, a balance within us. It is important to take time off to remain silent. So, creation of silent zones in the environment, creation of silent zones among ourselves, within ourselves. This is an important measure to prevent noise pollution. There are people who take maunavrata means they take a pledge that we will not speak on particular days and that also is a healthy practice and wherein we are not exposed to the noise. Another strategy could be honking in public places like teaching institutes, hospitals should be banned. And in commercial, hospital and industrial buildings, adequate soundproof system should be installed. Ban of loudspeakers, loud music after a particular time. Further, musical instrument sound should be controlled to desirable limits. Fireworks during festivals should be as per the norms of the place. And dense tree cover is useful even in preventing noise pollution. And explosives should not be used in the forest, mountainous and mining areas. Avoid continuous music, shouting. Have a time for silence every day. Using earphones continuously is another major hearing loss impairment causing practice. So this we need to take care of. And finally, if you look at the industrial workers and construction workers who work among a screeching noise, they need to be provided with earplugs. So safety measures in all industrial establishments and construction sites will ensure a better prevention of noise pollution.